everyone to the ME1 part 2 break, mechanical energy to electrical energy. The aim of this experiment is to observe the conversion of the gravitational potential energy to electrical energy for a water turbine. The equipment we have for this experiment is showing here. We have a measuring cylinder with water inside. The water will flow through a no nozzle, this one, and it will fall into the um, to the water turbine. Now I'm, I'm going to show you how we're going to set up for the brack. Before we start with the experiment, we need to get some parameters. The first thing we need to get is the radius of the cylinder. We also need to get the height of the, the maximum height of the water uh, to the ground, okay? Then we also need to get the height from the nozzle here to the ground. We have a clamp that avoids the water flow and when we are ready to start, we are going to open this clamp, the water will flow and we are going to measure on the computer the energy produced. Once we got all of the parameters, we are ready to start the experiment. First, we have to start recording on the computer. Then we can open the clamp, water will start flowing, the turbine will start running, and we are going to see the difference in power in the graph. Once we are happy with the level of the water, it shouldn't be very low. We clamp it again, and then we need to stop the measurement. And now this new height we are going to measure, this will be our final water height. Okay, with the graph you generated, uh, you are going to calculate the energy as the integral of the curve, so the area under the curve. And then hopefully you would have everything ready for your data analysis. Talking about data analysis, let's talk a bit about the questions on your performer. Let's start with the scheme of our prac. We have a fuel tank that over time will have less water. The first thing we should do is calculate the mass of water used by the equation shown in here. We know the value of pi and the density of water rho. We determine the radius of the water cylinder R and H is the difference in height from when the water is in its maximum and its lowest level. But we didn't measure R, H as I represented in here, but instead we measured H top and H bottom. So we will have to think a bit how to get H. Going back to our initial setup, when we want to calculate the variation in potential energy, we have to be mindful of the height we use in our calculations. If we think about layers of water, each layer has a different height from the ground, meaning all, not all the fluid is raised to its, its maximum height. So how can we account for all of the layers without doing endless calculations? The way to do that is by considering the average between the top and the bottom level. Please take a moment to digest why this makes sense if necessary. We also need to discount the height of, of the nozzle. So we make sure we are accounting only for the path of the water that will become electrical energy. Finally, we can calculate the change in potential energy by using the average height we previously determined. This will be our theoretical energy. Now, if we want the efficiency, we have to determine experimentally. With the graph we got on this track, we got the power in watts and the time in seconds, and a curve more or less like this. The area under the curve would then be the energy in watts per second, oh, watts times second, which is equal to joules. When having the theoretical and experimental in the same unit, you can easily determine the efficiency of the process. You will most likely see that the conversion is not 100%. If so, it's normal, don't worry. What do you think is the reason for that? That's it from me. See ya!